In a previous video, I talked about units you probably don't want to invest in that are early game. But in this video, let's do the opposite. Let's talk about units that you can invest in early game, or in some cases, that it's optimal to invest in in the early game. So one of these units, obviously, is a Leer, because that is your starting unit, and it's a force deploy, and a Leer is a solid unit. So obviously, you want to invest in a Leer. Uh, another unit that is pretty easy to invest in is Saline. She has pretty decent stats. She usually won't double things mid to end game. Uh, she can double some things like enemy armor, but she has builds that revolve around Levin Sword that are pretty viable and her base class is decent. So she can be a pretty strong like A tier unit. Chloe is also a good unit to invest in. She never really falls off. If you know how to use her on a fixed maddening mode and this is without DLC, uh, she's pretty strong. Right now I'm on chapter 9 and she has a Steel Lance plus 3 with an engraving. And even with if this, if this was a Steel Lance plus 1, she would still be absolutely insane. Um, with Sigurd, she doubles everything. So she has, very, she has the highest speed of all of your units starting out. And if you throw Sigurd on her, she gets extra build. And then with the Steel Lance, she just one rounds pretty much everything and can solo a lot of maps. Now it doesn't require that much investment to get her to this point. If any, you just use her and put Sigurd on her. Uh, alternatively, if you just hand her a strength plus two bond ring, which can be created through randomness or through bond ring manipulation, um, you can make her very effective that way. The thing with the steel lance is as it upgrades to plus three, it loses weight. And then if you get it to plus five long term, it loses even more weight. And she has some of the best speed growth in the game. Uh, so that being said, I would say she's like an easy S tier unit. She's been good on every single one of my fixed growth maddening runs of that DLC and there hasn't been any really real downside. She's just always good. Yunaka is another unit you can invest in that's good. You can just upgrade her dagger, and all she needs is one weapon, which is kind of nice, and the nice thing about daggers is it debuffs enemy defenses, does good damage, they're very light, and she's very fast. You can throw her in trees or pillars, and she'll be like a dodge tank that can stall entire groups of enemies by herself, and she's definitely going to make the early game much easier. Anna is also very similar. If you know how to level her up, all you do, you put Micaiah on her, have her heal. Uh, you can also level her up on John's Paralog if you do her Paralog first and have her heal villagers. She on Mage Knight, Sage, or High Priest is a mage carry with good speed growth and insane magic growth. The highest magic growth in the game tied with John on Sage. Uh, she's 80% magic growth on Sage and 75% magic growth on Mage Knight and High Priest. High Priest... So you put her on High Priest for less damage, more utility, more luck growth. You put her on Sage for balanced, and you put her on Mage Knight for better speed and better damage output. But then she loses the utility because she can't use staves. Uh, but really solid unit. Fram, honestly, you can run Fram and she's actually fine. All you have to do is promote her into High Priest, and then she can use Tomes and she's relevant. So you can do that, or you can second seal her. She hits level 10 pretty easily because she's your only healer for the most part outside of Jean, and she actually is viable and she has enough speed growth that she's relevant and if you put her on sage or mage knight she will be a decent mage it's fast enough to double similar to anna she won't be as powerful as anna but she'll be a solid a tier unit and i was actually a little surprised that she popped off and this is no dlc maddening fixed growth uh on sage and my third maddening run she popped off uh not because of randomness it's fixed growth so pure unit planning you know if you just have her heal Put her on High Priest, and then if you want to increase her damage, put her on Sage or Mage Knight, and then she'll start to deal more damage and snowball a little bit. Um, now, unlike Anna, she won't make you money, but she's a solid mage. She's she's relevant. She's viable. Um, Alchrist, definitely worth the investment. He is one of the best archers in the game, if not the best archer in the game. His passive Luna allows him to ignore defense, and it, it triggers based on his dex, and his dex is almost 20 right now. And he hasn't even been upgraded into his advanced class. So this, and he also has 70% dex growth. So as he levels up, every 10 levels on fixed mode, he gets seven points of dex guaranteed. So he gets to like 35 to 50 dex pretty rapidly as you approach mid to end game. And he just triggers Luna constantly. So he just is always ignoring armor. It, it, it penetrates half their defensive value. So hugely useful. And also it's great on a brave bow. And he's just a solid unit. Uh, Citrine, she's not bad. She's like medium. I would say she's like low A, high B tier. She's low A tier if you use Bond Ring Manipulation to get her the double Thunder build where you double with Thunder regardless of speed. 
She has lower speed than Fram, Anna, and Saline, but she can make up for it with her base magic stat if you use that specific bond ring. But you do have to manipulate the game to produce that ring. You have to keep reloading saves until you eventually get it, because otherwise you'll just burn through all your bond fragments and probably not get it. So I would say she's B tier without it, but A tier with it. Diamant, he's definitely worth investing in because when you get him, he's already level 10, so he can upgrade immediately. Same thing with Alcrest and Citrine. Uh, the big upside of him is that he has good defensive stat and decent build, so he can run axes fairly well. He's a good candidate for Brave Axe. Um, he's just a solid unit. He, there's really no downside to him. He's just a decent unit. He's like a solid A tier. Uh, Amber, you could invest in Amber. He's basically like Alfred, both upside. Like, he just starts off with better stats and a higher level, so you don't really have to invest in him. He can promote immediately. Um, he's, like, a maybe a high B tier, so he's not... I would say Alfred's, like, a C. Uh, so he's he's probably one of the worst units. Not one of the worst. One of, like, the average units you can invest in if you want to, but you probably shouldn't. Uh, Lapis, I would skip. Uh, Jean. So Jean, he's like Anna, but he requires more work to get him... Like started but once you do get him started he snowballs and on almost any class you put him on so if you get him as early as humanly possible and just have him be your main healer he will start to catch up on levels and as long as you just like keep him safe and have him heal eventually he will hit level 10 and then you can advance him and then reclass him into whatever you want but he's he's a lot like anna except he just takes way more to get going so of the two of them i'd rather invest in anna because it takes way less energy and less time less focus and in some cases, if you just do it correctly, it takes almost no extra effort on your part. Uh, with John, you can achieve a similar result. You just have to have him heal, and then you want to probably throw Micaiah on him for using Great Sacrifice. It gives you a lot of SP and XP. But those are the units that I would say are worth early investment. Uh, Louis, I've had bad luck with. I've tried running him on multiple Maddening runs. Uh, he just falls off in terms of stats. You can fix him with Halberdier and things like that, but his speed stat is never going to be good, and that's fundamentally an issue with him. Uh, his defensive growth isn't that high, so that like as you enter the middle game, enemies start hitting right through his defense anyways. They double him consistently, and in a lot of cases, they crit him, uh, because if you look at his luck, it's quite low. <laughs> he has some of the lowest luck in the game, and I think his luck growth is actually bad as well. So let me look him up. I have it right here. Louis, luck growth, 25%. So yeah, so he's always going to be getting crit. He also has low dex growth of 25%, and his dex is kind of on like the average side. Um, but he has kind of like kind of bad accuracy, really terrible speed, and just really bad luck. Like his luck stat, he, he gets, enemies have like 10 to 20% crit rate against him in the middle game. And that's 20% crit is scary. Like if five things hit you, you're getting crit. So that's that's not nothing. That's not anything to ignore. So I would say in that for those reasons, he's just like a solid B tier unit where if you invest in him, you can make him work on Halberdier, but it's really just Halberdier carrying him. Uh, but there are, I would say half the, the early game units are good. Half of them are bad. I would say that's like kind of my take on this. And some of them are hard carries. Like I would say Chloe, Anna, and Alir are hard carries. Saline and Yunaka. Well, Yunaka is a hard carry too. Uh, Saline is like a secondary carry. She's like... She's like almost hard carry status. Um, Alchrist is like almost hard carry. Diamant is almost hard carry. So these are the, like these these units up here. I would say are the ones that are actually good. Fram actually kind of won me over when I tried running her, um, like making her a mage. I think her magic growth is bad though. Let me see. Fram magic growth twenty five. That's actually not bad. Yeah, she's actually decent because you put her on Sage. That's fifty five percent magic growth. That's that's great. Like if this were a different Fire Emblem game. You, and you said this mage has 55% magic growth, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty good. So, yeah, 55% speed, 55% magic. She's actually a solid mage. Her only downside, zero build growth. Uh, but, you know, you can just have her using lighter tomes, and her speed growth can kind of compensate for her lack of build. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I wanted to talk about positive things instead of negative things, because some people don't like when I talk trash about their favorite unit or something which i get because you know I, I like some of these bad units too like I, I really like lapis even though she's really bad so i get it so i'm with you on that all right thanks for checking this out definitely drop a comment if i missed any of these good starter units uh, now the dlc makes makes it so you can pretty much make anyone viable uh, i'm not really sure how i feel about that 
on one end, it's good because it allows you to use any unit you want. But on the other end, it's almost like we're playing different games if you're running DLC versus not running DLC. So it kind of creates like points of contention just by virtue of existing where it's like, what's true for me isn't true for you because if you have the DLC, it is a different game in a lot of ways. Like you have access to tools I don't have access to. So it's like, oh, just do this thing that it boosts everyone's growth rates. Like just use Tiki and now this unit's growth rates are fixed. And it's like, yeah, you're objectively correct. You're not wrong. So like when, when people post comments saying stuff like that, they're right. They're absolutely right. And this is why I had a problem with the DLC splitting the game so much, right? Like the DLC upgrades and abilities being so powerful because now there's like two versions of the game. So there's like, there's gonna be confusion and discrepancies. Like we're not gonna understand like, I have to basically assume if someone says, oh, this unit's great on Maddening, that they're probably using DLC or they're over-investing in them. It's usually one of those two things for some of these units. Uh, but for the most part, I would say overall people agree on, like, what's good and what's bad. But DLC does add this extra layer of confusion now where it's like, oh, just throw Tiki on them. And it's like, well, that's not a solution in the, like, the non-DLC version of the game. So it's kind of, we're kind of living in a... Now, funny enough... Funny enough, Alir's, you know, Alir is like black, or black, uh, let's say black and white. Alir is red and blue. It's very much like red is non-DLC, blue is DLC. Those are the two versions of the game. So it's even in the game's character design that there's going to be a divide. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely drop a comment if I missed any of the good starting units or if you have a strong argument or a case to be made, or there's a case to be made for some other units. Uh, like Louis, for example, or Citrine. Abia, uh, yeah, peace.